Um, so again, I'd, I'd like to welcome everyone who's here today. My name is Cindy Vandenbosch. Uh, I'm the founder of Turnstile Tours. And for those of you who are not familiar with Turnstile Tours, um, we are a company that specializes in doing programs and partnerships with nonprofit organizations around the city um, to really w raise awareness about the people and places that make New York City work. Um, and so today I'm, I'm so excited because we have Paul Campbell coming to the program um, live from his studio in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And this is actually how we met Paul. Um, we have been giving the official tours of the Navy Yard for 12 years now. And, uh, and, and um, you know, this is, this is how we initially met Paul. Um, and so today he's going to be sharing his work and, you know, the theme of, of much of his work that we're going to be exploring together today is chaos and control. And what's so interesting is we're like experiencing this even today. Uh, we'll be exploring that through his artwork, but um, over the last hour, you can do everything to prepare and then Zoom breaks down and stops working. <laughs> And so that's why we're on Google Meet. And, and in order for us to make this program as seamless as possible, we ask that those of you that have recently joined us, if you could mute yourselves and also turn off your videos, um, which you can do at the bottom of the screen, so that you mainly will just see Paul and I going back and forth um, versus other people kind of popping up on the screen. Um, so that that would be really helpful to us. Um, this is, uh, a, a, in a way, this is a form of, of art unto itself today, <laughs> exploring these themes. So, Paul, we're really grateful to, to have you with us today. And, um, and you had asked as well that we talk a little bit about what Turnstile Tours is doing to adapt in this moment. We obviously are not operating our tour programs. We do tours in partnership with the Prospect Park Alliance, with the Brooklyn Navy Yard, with the Brooklyn Army Terminal. We do programs about New York City's public market system, which supports small mom and pop food businesses. Um, we also have a partnership with the Street Vendor Project and do tours about street vendor stories. Our focus is really on going deep, on exploring the, the places and people that make New York such a unique place to live. Um, but uh, right now we can't do, we can't be out in the world in that way because of the pandemic. And so instead we, we launched virtual programs starting on March 19th and we've been doing them daily at 11 a.m. since that time. And we've done now almost 70 programs. And, and, and these programs have been great opportunities for us to connect with people like Paul and really showcase uh, the work that they do in ways that we've done on tours in the past. Um, and so uh, that's that's what we're seeking to do here today. We're also doing programs like this afternoon. We're doing a program with a, a food business in the Essex market, and they're gonna be sharing uh, some of their techniques and stories. They're called Heroes and Villains. Um, tomorrow, we're gonna be looking at the history of carousels in Brooklyn using mostly archival materials. Um, and then later this week on Wednesday, we'll be doing a virtual Fleet Week since Fleet Week has been canceled. Um, every year we look forward to having Andrew give tours in the harbor all about the ships that come in for Fleet Week and the history, military history of the harbor. Um, this year we won't be doing that, but our partners who operate wooden motor yachts, Classic Harbor Line, will be coming on as guests um, to share a little, little bit about, their, they build their own boats, uh, to share a little bit about that. And then Andrew's gonna take us uh, on a virtual kind of Fleet Week tour, looking at past Fleet Weeks, going all the way, going back, you know, 50 years. Um, so that's that gives you a taste of some of the kinds of programs that we're doing. And this is an effort for us to stay afloat and stay in business and keep sharing stories and building community in the way what, that we would if we were out in the city giving tours. Um, so thank you for bearing with us with the technological technological change. Um, we've had just a few people join us in the last five minutes. So I'm just gonna reiterate, maybe for the last time or one of the last times um, that we, are, we had to shift over to Google Meet um, because Zoom went down. 
And so what we ask is that you please mute yourself um, and you can also turn off your video if you're not comfortable with your image being seen on the screen as we are making a recording of this. Um, in terms of making this interactive, we do wanna make it interactive. And so we ask that you um, open up the chat box and um, you can put into the chat box your questions, your reactions as we move along in the presentation. Okay, uh, and if everyone can turn off their video, that would be helpful, I'm, I'm hearing from one of our producers. So if, if it's possible for you to just click to the bottom of your screen and turn off your video, um, that would, that would uh, help. And how you do that is you click the camera at the bottom of the screen um, and it just turns off your video so your image is not on the screen. Um, Cause that's not something we can control on our side. Um, Okay, all right, so uh, it looks like we have our critical mass of people here. And Paul, um, you've displayed your work all over the world. Um, you've been to, uh, you know, on one hand, you did a, a big show, a retrospective um, at Snug Harbor Cultural Center on, on Staten Island, um, but you also went to Wuhan, China, which we're gonna hear about, and had an exhibition there. You've been to Singapore and India, um, and you've done public art projects as well that have engaged the public in different ways. Um, the theme of this program today is chaos and control and, and how you have sort of uh, removed, um, in some ways you've, you've uh, worked with uh, different kinds of objects uh, than maybe most artists work with. So um, whether it's it's toys or, or string or even koosh balls. Um, and then not only that, but you've also in some cases uh, engaged the public to create unpredictable patterns that you then turn into works of art. Um, and so before we dig into a lot of your artwork, um, which we'll be sharing both in your studio, as well as through um, some slides that we put together of your artwork, um, I was hoping that all of us could get to know you a little bit better. I know you have friends and family um, who are such an important part of your life and, and your art making process and even colleagues that are joining us today. Um, but could we, could you take us back in time? Have you always sort of been an artist? In a way, uh, like even when you when when you were a kid, <laughs> um, I should maybe let my sister answer that one. But I think uh, it's probably always been a pain in the butt. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I I came um, I came upon art really early on, and not really sure how it happened. Uh, really, there was no one in my family that really did any um, really. Um, were, was involved in visual art or music or theater or anything. So I'm not really sure how it happened, but somehow it drifted into my life and um, became more and more important, um, you know, uh, as I got older. And, you know, even as a, when I was, when I was fairly young, I think, um, you know, the, even in high school, for example, I mean, uh, you know, my dad died when I was 11 and, and um, then, um, when uh, I think it was my between my first and second year in high school, my my brother, um, my oldest brother, who was kind of a surrogate father in retrospect, he died in Vietnam, which was um, obviously horribly tragic for my entire family. And um, you know, I, I got a lot. Uh, I spent a tremendous amount of time in high school in the art room, and um, you know, I didn't really think much about it at the time. But in retrospect, I realized that it would it was really uh, and it got me through a lot of things. Um, so, um, wow, yeah, it's it's so interesting when you you and I were kind of talking about this when you're like in my upbringing. I never we we didn't go to a lot of museums when I was a kid, but I've ended up working in museums, which gives me an interesting take. And I wonder if it's kind of the same with you as an artist. When did you kind of decide? to move to New York City. And at that time, were you already an artist? And, and what was the scene like when you first came to New York? Uh, well, so yeah, um, my, my wife Susan and I decided to move to Europe, which we did for a few months. We thought, you know, we both came from the same kind of small middle, mid, you know, middle class town. Um, and, we, we thought it would be a huge challenge to move to Europe. And then it very quickly seemed like a life was, was pretty easy. And, um, 
thought that the real challenge would be to move to New York City and kind of, you know, be an artist in New York City. So that was the, <laughs> so uh, we just went for it. And, uh, you know, I was very uh, thankful that Susan came along with that, with that idea um, because it was really more about my art career. But then she, of course, you know, ended up making, you know, fantastic friends and really dug into New York, maybe even more than I did. Um, but we, we, um, we searched, we were, uh, staying in Boston, which is where we're, we're from. And we were searched and searched for a place in Manhattan, couldn't find anything that we could afford that was halfway decent. And someone said, what about Brooklyn? And, uh, I never heard anything about really much about Brooklyn, uh, which is hard to believe now, but, um, we, uh, we walked across the, the, uh, Williamsburg bridge and, uh, went and, and, uh, investigated this raw, you know, warehouse space um, on North 10th uh, between Bedford and Barrie in Williamsburg and rented this 3,000 square foot warehouse space that we fixed up completely on our own. Um, our rent was $400 a month uh, at the time. <laughs> so those was, that, <laughs> was that uh, a kind of live work studio space that you had or, or was it... Uh, an, an artist studio space. No, no, it was completely live work, and we fixed it up while we were living there. And it was, it was, it was rough. Uh, it was raw. There was, um, I'd forgotten all about this, but there was, we we only had commercial heat, so the heat would go off. Um, we would only get heat from like eight thirty in the morning, maybe eight in the morning, till four thirty in the afternoon, and no heat on the weekend. So. Friday, 4.30, the heat would go off and would not come back on again until Monday. So we used to, you know, we'd go on excursions. We'd go to the Met. Um, and believe it or not, on, I think it was North 8th and Bedford, uh, there, was a topless, uh, there was a topless bar. And the, uh, it was really kind of a sleazy place. And the owner was kind of a sleazy guy. But he did really crank the heat up for the dancers. And so Susan and I would, <laughs> Susan and I would go in there to get warm. Uh, maybe it was more fun for me than Susan. <laughs> I mean, what's unbelievable about that is if you go to that location today, I mean, for folks who are maybe not from the city, Williamsburg was rezoned a while back, which of course this is going to come into the story a little bit later, but what a different place Williamsburg was uh, at the time. Now today, that's where the Brooklyn Brewery is located. You've got the White Hotel and some swanky restaurants. Uh, and so it's, 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 it's a different, the neighborhood has definitely changed since you were there. And we actually have uh, some images like uh, that I'd like to pull up uh, in a slideshow for everybody um, so that we can we can kind of see we can see here, um, bear with me for just a second here, um, but I'm going to pull up uh, an article that you shared and, and some images so people can, can get kind of a mental picture. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, and I'm going to click. Oh, I, I just thought I'd share this really quickly. This is um, Paul. Um, so this is this is Paul that you can see here uh, with students. And this was actually a couple years ago um, when we brought high school students who are interested in the fine arts and in painting um, to his studio as part of a, a special program we put together with master classes for, for high school students who were studying at the Pratt pre-college program um, in the summertime. Um, but here we have the building show. Um, and if you, you could tell us a little bit, give us a little bit of context. So, so that was, at, I, I think it was the first, um, first gallery in Williamsburg. Um, it's kind of really more in, it, it located, I think more in green, really the border of Greenpoint. And um, I had this idea to do this show with, um, uh, another artist named Mary um, Rennell, and she, um, so we, we put this show together, and, and the, the only premise to the show um, was that you, you had to li live in our building, 
And um, the director of the gallery was this kind of wild uh, Korean guy, uh, you know, and he, he, his name was Mo Bak, which evidently means nothing in, in Korean. Um, and he loved the idea of it being very democratic, that it wasn't a curated show in the sense that, you know, all you had to do was be in the building to get into it. So, uh, and that's, that, that's me in that photo with the, with the kid on my shoulders who, um, that's Zach, and he's much bigger than me now. I could certainly not pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> he could maybe pick me up. And uh, just great to see that group of people. Yeah, that's so great. And we have another image here. Is this you with the uh, uh that's me with with Zach's on my on my uh on my leg. Oh that's so great. That's so great. And this this is this is again what year? Um the building show was I believe 1985, I think, I want to say. Got it, got it. Okay. Um so yeah, so we've got we've got sort of your experience here in, in Williamsburg. Um, like during this time when you were, um, when you were in, 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 you know, a, a young artist in, in New York City, uh, were you working other kinds of jobs during that time? So, you know, I, you know, I actually don't wear hats, but if I did, I would wear a, a, a tennis cap and a beret, but uh, <laughs> so I, yeah, I've always worn two hats and in that regard and, um. Uh, you know, I started uh, playing tennis. Actually, I didn't, I, I was never, I never have, had any instruction in tennis. I, I started playing um, in high school. One of the football players talked me into going out for the, uh, whoops. Um, one of the football players talked me into going out for the tennis team, which, you know, really was um, in the town that I grew up in, really tennis was not a thing, you know. Um, so really the, the, and this, and I'm not making this up. The, the you know, the play, the football players and baseball players that would, would walk past for for practice would, you know, they would call us like sissies and you, you know, you you, you faggots and you know, yell out this, these things to us. And then, um, you know, then the 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 tennis boom came along. For those of you who are tennis players, the, the tennis boom hit, uh, you know, and then. It was the battle of the sexes with, uh, you know, Bobby Riggs and uh, Billie Jean King and, and tennis became, started to become televised and became very popular. And some of the same people that were yelling, um, you know, obscenities at us were then asking me to teach them how to play. So, um, you know, not that I really knew what I was doing, but, um, but I started, started teaching very early on and realized that I could, it was a way to support myself through art school. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've been teaching tennis for a long time and now you, you're the director of the Prospect Park Tennis Center. And while we're going to focus mostly on your art, uh, I know this is a big part of, of your life. It's this other hat. And I'm, I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about, like, does the time that you spend at the tennis center uh, kind of complement that solitary time that you then spend in your studio? Um, and, and I'll pull up some pictures so you can walk us through um, a little bit of your work at, at the Prospect Park Tennis Center kind of in response to that, that question. Um, so let's see here. Um, all right, so what, what, what's happening here in the photo we're seeing? So th this is just, this is a group shot of, of um, the Tennis Center staff. It's, it's, not a, it's not full staff, but it's, it's just, a, it's a nice group shot and um, Really, uh, you know, the Tennis Center has been an amazing experience for me, an amazing project. And it's really about the people, um, you know, that, that, um, that, that make the Tennis Center happen. And that's uh, Sue Donahue is the, the president of the Prospect Park Alliance, which runs the Tennis Center and is an amazing organization that also, you know, does so much for Prospect Park. Um, yeah. So, you know, the Tennis Center has been a big part of my life. It's, it's a, absolutely no question about it and uh, it's it, you know it's 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 just a wonderful thing to be a part of i um help you know really design and and help with the with the building um uh and you know help get this that center started from the beginning so it's a it's been an amazing project and one that i'm quite proud of and my the most um 
for me, the most important program. It's not the most important program in terms of uh, financial success, which the center has had a lot of financial success. Um, but we, my wife, uh, Susan, and I have um, started this program called Special Aces. I think, I think it's 14 years ago now. And um, Susan's a therapist and uh, works with kids uh, with, with issues. And, um, and, you know, I'm a tennis, uh, tennis pro instructor. And so we, we formed this program and it's just been an amazing experience. So it's really been my favorite part of uh, being involved with the, with the tennis center. Yeah, this is something that when I, I learned about it, I mean, you know this, I've spent many years uh, trying to make visitor experiences at museums and tours more accessible to people with disabilities. And um, when I learned about this program, I was just so excited that you're building community and social skills and all kinds of things. Um, through this project that that uh, that you've you've launched at the, at the tennis tennis center, how long have you been at the Prospect Park Tennis Center? You said you were there from the beginning. What what so year was that? I started in two thousand three. It's seventeen years. Wow, that's so great. That's yeah. so great. These photos yeah. are just so much fun. Um, look at that sky. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, one of the, one of the pros and. So uh, just dropping names here, but you know, one of the cool things is that, you know, once in a while you get to brush with uh, some celebrities. So this was really cool to have uh, Adam Driver and, and uh, uh, come to the, come to the tennis center and do a, do a shoot there. So that was pretty. Uh, pretty yeah. Lovely. Oh, yeah. that's great. That's great. Adam Beck and Driver. Um, and uh, here. Sue and uh, Phil Lee, who's a, a He's a player and supporter of the tennis center. Actually, owns um, one of my paintings, and, and just it's a great guy. And he's he's really helped support Special Aces uh, from the from the very beginning. Yeah. Would you would you say, Paul, that like the it seems like the the work that you're doing at the tennis center is very people intensive, uh, and and you're probably on your feet a lot. And then you have this other kind of hat that you wear, like you said. There's <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, there's a beret uh, for for the artist side of things, and then on the other hand, you have your tennis racket. Um, so, it, it, do you find that the two part, these two parts of your life have, have complemented each other well? Yeah, I, th I think they. I think so. I mean, I I like to I tell people I have you know two unstable professions, and uh, but you know from, somehow we're able to raise a couple of kids, but um, you know. It's great to be, I mean, as I said, the center is so much about the people and it's also, you know, great to get exercise. And, you know, some people would even make the argument that there are some similarities between the sport of tennis and art. I know my friend Eric Fischel, who's a, a, a fantastic painter, but he, he's, um, I've heard him speak about, you know, the idea of art, you know, playing tennis being this kind of conversation back and forth and, um, and you know, art obviously is also a conversation. So, um, so I think they relate. And um, yeah, actually, the other program that I really like at the tennis center is uh, I see Richard signed in, and uh, uh, so we I run this little league called the Art and Tennis League, which uh, started out many, many, many years ago, almost as a kind of a joke. And um, but it's it's really a wonderful league where, where there's this crossover between you know people that are interested in. Um, or people that work in the arts um, in, in one form or another and, and tennis. And so th there's quite a crossover, as you can imagine. There, there are a lot of artists that, are, that, are, that play. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, so we, we were talking about a little bit earlier that you were this artist in Williamsburg and there's this whole kind of artsy scene that's there. And then you end up moving to the Brooklyn Navy Yard and that's around the time when we met, but could you tell us about what brought you to the Brooklyn Navy Yard? Like why, why did you make that move? Um, well, it was pretty simple. I, we, um, I had the loft in Williamsburg for 30 years um, never had paid the rent late once and, and we were evicted. So, you know, uh, which is the way it works in Williamsburg these, or, or it did in those days. So that was, um, 
uh, nine years ago, and I decided to uh, come to the Brooklyn Navy Yard. I knew um, uh, Andrew Kimball, who was the, the president at the time and did a tremendous job in, in, in reviving the yard. And um, he didn't get me a great deal on rent. He just uh, put me in touch with somebody and, and I was thankful for it. And I rented a space here. Um, so, you know, it's been a great place to, to create. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're gonna now kind of dig in and dive into your works of art, but um, one of the favorite, since you are in your studio right now, one of my, you know, whenever I step into your studio, one thing I really enjoy is just seeing all of the unexpected uh, items and, and objects that you paint with. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm wondering if, if it's possible for us to, we could either do this now or we can do it a little bit later in the program, but see some of those, those objects that uh, you might have out, uh, whether it's a cush ball or something else. Uh, okay, yeah. Or you could bring them to us. <laughs> <laughs> we can. We can, um, we can walk a little bit. Um, this might be a little choppy. I apologize. That's okay. No, it seems okay. So, um, yeah. So this is my 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 hangout when I'm not at the tennis center. This is my uh, desk area, which uh -huh. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a <laughs> sort big, of <laughs> big old desk that I traded a painting for when I. Um, moved from Williamsburg, traded with the landlord that evicted us. It was actually ended up being a friendly. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. And then um, this is, I don't know what you're seeing, but yeah. You, so we can uh, see if you can go down just a little bit. This right. is kind of your workspace. And, and what we're seeing are, are like koosh balls. And it looks like there's a champagne bottle. There's uh, some kind of car, it looks like a remote control car. There's a Brooklyn uh, Brooklyn beer can. That's um, that's important for Ellen and Steve to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and and a Brooklyn beer bottle, which I didn't. Know. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's uh, so. Um, yeah, St uh, Steve and Ellen are two of my really uh, earliest friends um, from Brooklyn. So yeah, been, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. So this is a uh, kind of take you around the studio a little bit. Yeah, we can come back to the paintings more, maybe more later. I don't know. I'm, again, it's very hard for me to see what you're seeing, but I guess I. Can yeah, see. I mean, if you. Oh, actually, this painting with the wood uh, in the background. If you could step back so we can see, just uh, see it in full scale. And I think I think this is really important because in a second we're going to pull up a slideshow that we so we can look really closely at the details and in, in some of these works. But you can see here, this helps us get a sense of scale, um, seeing what's seeing the artwork uh, on your on your walls. Sorry if it's choppy and clunky. No, we're all, we're all doing the best we can. This my is son, uh, yeah. these are these are the times in which we live. <laughs> my, my son Sam is a steady cam operator, so he's going to be uh, <laughs> he's not going to be happy with this job. But, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, Sam. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so anyway, that's uh, Great, great. So, so uh, what I'm gonna do is um, pull up, um, we kind of put together uh, a slideshow so that you could work us through your creative process. Um, and so I'm, I'm gonna pull that up now. Um, so we can see the sort of layered uh, approach to your work. Um, and, and here, of course, is a, is a shot from when I was in the studio, uh, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, but when, how did you start painting with uh, something other than a paintbrush? When did this idea kind of come to you? Uh, so I was working in my studio in, in Williamsburg one day and I just, I put a canvas kind of at, a, uh, at an incline and I just took a ball. I, it, may, it may have been a tennis ball, it may have been another type of ball, one of my kids balls, I'm not really sure, but, um, and I just rolled it and it, kind of I dipped it in paint and rolled it and it made this kind of interesting arc and um, then I just kept doing it um, and um, my friend Rene Pierre Alain, uh came to the stu came into the studio and he just said that's the best thing you've ever done and uh, I respect his opinion I, and so I just you know decided to really explore this idea of re removing my hand from the canvas and that in other words not 
painting with the traditional kind of brush in hand. Um, although I have come back to that more recently. Yeah, yeah. And and we'll see like different kinds of examples of that. But this is from um, one of uh, kind of one of your early shows after you had started this this approach. And and you started because you 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 were playing with um it was you also tried like sort of painting with your children's toys, right? Yeah, so this is this painting is made uh, with a remote control car dragging a brush, um, and you know what I what what I what what interested me was, you know, this idea of kind of uh, expression. The expressionists were the were, were really big shots when I was in art school, and um, you know, um, I thought it was both a, a, a homage to them and also a parody of the of the big you know. Um, macho abstract expressionist gesture, and uh, so I I started doing these paintings using the cars. Uh, this is a very large painting, uh, probably maybe the largest painting I've ever made. Um, so, and this is also uh, is this is also with remote control cars? It is, yes. Yeah, it's, it's tire tracks. Um, uh huh. So, yeah. Oh, that's great. This is a smaller, this is a different type of a toy, but, uh, you know, so sometimes they're really um, kind of, uh, you know, very direct and other times in, in kind of harsh and other times they're softer. Um, this is on the harsher side. <laughs> and this one also has koosh balls, right? We can kind of see that in the work. It does. And, I, you know, I started calling many of the works uh, hybrid, uh, this hybrid series for that reason that I started to then, you know, kind of mix the techniques initially, like this one was made with remote control cars. And then I went back in and painted that blue to kind of, you know, um, you know, just uh, make the marks do something a little bit different. And um, and this one here, what are we, is this, is this a, a motorcycle or what are you using here? <laughs> um, you know, to be honest, I can't even remember what, what toy made that, but uh, <laughs> it's a small piece and then went back in and painted what I often do, which is kind of a strange technique, but, you know, just to make my life more difficult, I, I often go back and paint the background last. So that gray, for example, was, was the last thing that was painted, not the first thing. But it, it, it tends to give the work this kind of edgy uh, qual you know, feeling and quality that I like. That is hard to imagine, especially getting in there and painting some of these really tight spots. I just can't imagine. <laughs> and then you've also done some public art um, engagement projects that also have this element of unpredictability on the canvas, in which case we see here, it's a wall at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And this is how you and I, I think, really got to know each other is, um, I was this, you created this through GPS tracking um, of different people who work in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And if everyone sees the orange lines um, on this, this wall, that's um, me giving a tour, the past, present, future tour inside the Navy Yard. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And that brought us together, which is terrific. Um, yeah, this was a really fun project. And, you know, the idea really, I mean, uh, a lot of, Whatever, it, whatever good ideas I have, they usually come from my kids or my family. And, and um, my um, oldest son, Zach, uh, is an urban planner and studied, and he, so he, he learned, you know, the really, uh, the essentials of um, GPS tracking. And so, you know, I thought it'd be nice to make something that was kind of, you know, fun and colorful instead of, you know, this idea of surveillance with GPS, you know. Um, that's kind of ominous and, and, and nasty. And uh, yeah. so this was commissioned by the, by the Navy Yard. It doesn't exist anymore. The building, that building behind looks quite different now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's building 77. It's, it's been completely renovated, filled with windows. That's where there's a food, public food space that's there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest projects that the Navy Yard has undertaken in recent years. Um, and about a million square feet has been renovated. Um, and you, I mean, you invited, I, I remember there was someone from Steiner Studios who rode around in their in their golf cart mm -hmm. on the movie campus there, and they were documented, all different kinds of workers, right? That, that yeah. you engaged. All different kinds, you know, all different 
different tenants in the yard. So that was my son, Sam, this is my friend, Julius. Oh, this is Sam? Yeah, that's Sam and uh, Julius, um, who actually is a, really a professional uh, painter. And, uh, but he came and helped out, which was amazing. Um, and that's, that's my son, Zach and, and Sam. And, and I, I love this photo because it's, it's a, a woman selling empanadas. So like, you know, just a couple days after we had finished the painting, um, you know, this woman parked her cart in front of the, in front of the wall and it just looks so perfect, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, the way, uh, public art, I think should work where, you know, um, the public kind of blends into it. I mean, one of my, my best moments when we were painting the wall was, um, uh, you know, the, I, I don't know, I forget the bus, the number of the bus, but the bus, uh, the bus was kind of coming down the hill and turning and we were, we were working on the wall and the bus driver gave me the thumbs up. And I thought, you know, that's so great, you know, that, you know, this is a guy that does this route every day. And if he likes it, that's, that, you know, that's a great thing. So uh, it was fun. And then people, uh, these are just some random folks that, you know, people started posing. Um, that's not a random folk. That's, and that's my friend, um, um, my friend, Bruce Ferguson, who's a, fabulous man and a fabulous curator. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the public art, you know, uh, it, it has a way, of, pardon? That's Susan's sister, Linda. <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. Nice, sorry, nice. No, but you know what, the, this mural really does evoke movement and it, it mm -hmm. and you can see that people are naturally inclined to kind of pose using their bodies with yeah. the movement that's yeah. evoked through through the painting. Bettina uh, did so much, uh, helped so much with this project. She was great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my work really involves movement uh, in one, one type or another. So it, even though that wall is quite different than, than most of my, my studio work, um, you know, it still is about, it's about this kind of documenting movement in some way. And we, yeah, we can see that here. There's like the element of unpredictability. There's also, uh, 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 people literally making their mark. Um, and so we've got mapping uh, with the Day in the Life project, but then you also had this project, Go Brooklyn, that you started at your studio when you opened up in the Navy Yard. Could you tell us a little bit more about this? And yeah, I'll kind of yeah. scroll through the slides as we go. I can actually walk out to that. Uh, and, uh, oh, and show us what it looks like in its current state? Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, all right, I'm gonna stop, so, stop the... Screen it's share. Kind of, um, see you. you know, this the thing about this project is that it, it continue it keeps changing because that, you know, whenever people come to visit the studio, I kind of grab them and, and ask them to put um, so the way it works is the black mark is uh, the black thumbprint is where you live, and then the red thumbprint is, is where you're from. So um, and it just gets crazier and crazier as, as time goes on. And um, and actually some of the the, the ink isn't really that permanent, so it's um, you know it's fading out over time. So it really is a living, a living artwork in a way. And you can I don't know if you, if this is clear, but you can see that there are people from really from all over the world uh, that end up on this side of the map. Yeah, um, yeah. In Wuhan, China, there, um, which we can talk about. Yeah. So that was a, a fun project. That again. Uh, Z um, Zach and Sam and, and everybody helped out with that. It was a family effort. <laughs> um, these are these are just some students that are interacting interacting with the map here. What about the lines that we see? What are these lines that people are drawing back and forth? Is it between so where they're from and, and and where they live? Yes. Yeah, they can connect it and, and sometimes, you know, write down where they're from and, and um, yeah. And here we have uh, Doug Steiner, uh, yeah, who oversees yeah. Steiner Studios. Yeah, <laughs> he's an important guy in the, in the Navy Yard. Absolutely. And and uh, in terms of public art, so we've looked at a few where you're, you're pulling in um, uh, influences of uh, friends and family or coworkers or people at the Navy Yard uh, and this Coney Island abstract project uh, You literally took a canvas down to Coney Island 
uh, collaborated with another artist and and invited people on the boardwalk to to engage with the canvas. Uh, can uh, can you share a little bit uh, about that that project? Yeah, that that was really fun. I mean, you know, Coney Island is Coney Island, right? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So. Um, you know, it was just a it was just a, a wonderful project where we invited these people in, and um, you know, and again, you know, everybody helped out. I know Sam is uh, my son. Sam has said that those are some of the most fun days of his life. Um, we really had a good time with it, and people just enjoyed it. You know, they really got they were really engaged in making the painting. So, I mean, our job was mostly just you know priming and putting the canvases out, and then people came and 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 just went for it. Really yeah, cool. yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can get this um, video to play uh, of of people kind of interacting with the canvas in a couple different ways. Um, so let me just pull this up here in just a second. We'll see if it'll if it'll if it'll uh, go along with us. Let's see. Okay. You seeing the Vimeo? Not yet. Okay. But maybe, maybe we don't need it. You know, um, it's not. It's fun, but folks, hold on. I, I think I I think I can figure it out. Hold on, everyone. This is a new format that we're working with today. <laughs> um, I, I think I can do it. So great to Here see. Here we go. Faces. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. Wow. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Uh, do you see the Vimeo on your screen? Looks like it's coming up. It's sort of halfway through. Yeah, there we go. She and Yo and I invited the public to make paintings in unusual ways in the Coney Island boardwalk. The project was called Coney Island Abstract. People really get into it. It was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Fun times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you like um I I, I yeah it's such a it's such a neat thing to see the you know woman in the wheelchair and that slip and slide who was the person that slid into the onto the canvas did you uh, that that was my son I wouldn't have, oh. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't ask anybody else to do that <laughs> but uh, yeah you know that that building was really dilapidated at the time. Um, and um, owned by this man named uh, Charlie Bendit, and he allowed us to use the building. Um, and it was really, you know, the, the building was, a, was really a mess, but it's a fabulous building. And they've since really fully renovated it. And um, my sons, uh, Zach and Jess, actually had their wedding there. And it's, it was an incredible venue. And we actually um, hung a few of those paintings in the venue for the wedding. <laughs> So oh, was, that's cool. That's fun. It really came full circle. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've also, so you've, you've done a lot of um, large scale works, but you've also done works on paper and, um, and that are, that are in small scale, but using some of these techniques. Um, so I'm going to pull that up here and I'll also remind people who have joined us more recently that um, if you, uh, if it's possible for you to stop your video at the bottom of the screen, stop camera, there's like a little icon camera. Um, that would be uh, helpful because we are recording this. We just want to make sure. Um, oh, this is the Coney Island abstract, right? So this is one of the works that came out of that. And uh, oh, and we have a, and we have another video that we can play here. Um, could you set this up for us? Because uh, this is this is now a, a work on paper, right? Yeah, you know, it. it, it I really. Um... I'm most comfortable working on large paintings, and then more recent, you know, fairly recently, I, I, I sort of found a way to make some smaller works on paper that, that seem to really work out, and, and actually they've been very popular. People really seem to like them, um, and it's 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 hard for people to buy, uh, you know, uh, 
seven by eight foot paintings and put them in their in their homes. But uh, but the works on paper are really fun and, and sort of quick and and, and and fun to make. And, and then what I usually do is I'll kind of roll that ball and then go back and work and paint back into the paintings and, and kind of uh, embellish the marks. Yeah, yeah, we can see that. We can see that here. We'll just pull this up one more time. <laughs> Um, Paul, as you're doing this, do you kind of have a sense, uh, since you've now been working with uh, balls and kush and stuff, like what, as you're going into it, is is do you do you have a sense of where you're wanting to go in some cases, as you're moving the ball around, for example, on the paper? Yeah, I mean, it, in, inevitably, what happens, and you, you can just flip through these, Cindy, if you want. Um, you know what happens is at first it's just like, okay, let's just roll this ball. And then, you know, before you know it, you start to get really involved in, you know, the consistency of the paint, you know, is it too thick? Is it too thin? Is the paper too smooth, too rough? Um, is the ball too large, too small? And suddenly all the, you know, you start to control all these elements with, and uh, so it's, it, it's really a mixture. It's, it's never uh, complete, complete, I guess, I guess it's never complete chaos. <laughs> Um, so this is a, a, a great art dealer that has um, in the front that has represented my work in, in um, South America over the years. And uh, she's, we, um, I just saw her in Spain fairly recently and that's um, my nephew Joe behind her. So uh, that was at the, that was at an art fair in Mexico that I, uh, that we did together and um, called Zona of Maco. And, um, just, you know, one of the things for me, the artwork has been a great opportunity to travel to a lot of different places. Um, uh, did a wonderful project with um, my friend Yasmin, um, who had this wild idea of, um, she invited two artists from each continent to make a work on that extra day during leap year um, on the same day. And then really kind of brought the show to different countries all around the world. So it was a wonderful resume builder and just a lot of fun. And so I didn't go to every one, but the, you know, the, the, the show was really uh, then presented all around the world. And some of what we're seeing here as we click through, we see there's sort of this added layer uh, where you're painting with string. Isn't that? Yeah. Uh, th so yeah, yeah I, I've used string. I just like that arc. I just kind of let it, arc and then kind of tap it on the canvas and it it um, just creates this this arc that I mean a lot of these are just you know really basic basic um, principles of physics right I mean it's the the string arcs in a certain way um, so th this this painting is called the river and it has a kind of graffiti feel and I put it in because um, my youngest son Sam is really my um, you know He's, a, he's an advocate, he's got a great eye, and he's also, uh, he may be my harshest critic, but, um, but he, um, he always comes up with these ideas and he'll say, Dad, why don't you just put a blue stripe down the middle? And I said, no, that's crazy. And then, you know, a couple of days later, I end up putting a blue stripe down the middle. <laughs> um, so after I did this painting, I, I then did a, a series with this kind of thing happening. And, and again, the blue is like the last thing that's painted. Um, and, and it makes it so vivid. I mean, it, it really does. That just that 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 slight kind of change in approach. Uh, so it's so it's so interesting how that came about. Um, we can see that here too. What's happening with this painting here? Um, how did how did you create this work that we're seeing? Oh. It sort of a slightly different different feel to it. It does have, it has a very different feel. It's um, part of a, I did a several shows at a, a gallery in Williamsburg. Um, and one of them was, was called the projection series. And there were these images that I made with, with toy cars and then projected them and blew them up very large on the canvas. And then they get kind of distorted and almost kind of pixelated or something. And, um, and I then, you know, I, years later went back and worked into that painting so it really is a hybrid of these different kinds of uh, attitudes and techniques 
Okay. And is everyone able to see um, the, the screen right now? Just want to make sure. Um, it's small. I see it very small, Cindy. Oh, okay. Let me, let me just make sure that. Um, just want to do a check with my team. Is everyone able to see it in large screen? We might see it differently than other people do. It looks like we lost the presentation on my side. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So hold on, hold on one second. Um, okay. Resume. Oh, what about now? It's no. Small, no. Small image. So it's just like, like cancel. Okay. Sorry, everyone. We are learning. This is a new, whole new world. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Um, so as as we're going to go back in and, and look at more of your works, but Paul, uh, what I find so interesting in some ways is that while when you're painting, sometimes that's a solitary experience, sometimes you're engaging other people in the foundational kind of elements, um, but then you're also creating works that, that you don't know where they're going to go in the world, whose wall they're going to be on, whether they're going to be in a person's home or in a restaurant. <laughs> um, and and yeah. are there? Does that is that kind of exciting? Do you do, do you have? Are there, are there certain stories uh, about where your paintings have gone that you could have never imagined that they would have ended up there? <laughs> yeah, I have I have lots of stories about that, but. Um... Yeah, it's but it you know in the bottom line is that it's just you know it's wonderful when people you know there's there's no better compliment for than for a person to really want one of your works to be in their home you know so that it's a fabulous you know I think it's a great feeling and I've sold works to institutions and and uh, foundations and corporations but really when people buy works and they go in their home it's fantastic and later we'll see an image of uh, one painting that. Uh, that someone, the first, that, well, I'll, I'll talk about it when it comes up. But. Okay, okay. Yeah. So here we have a, a painting that then, that we also have um, kind of an interesting video that we're gonna share. <laughs> um, and so I don't know if you, you'd you like to, to set this up in any way, what we're about to see. This is just Sam being, yeah. Sam being Sam, you know? Okay. So this is kind of fun. We're gonna pull this up here, this video um, of your son kind of engaging and he's not the only one, you know, we've seen people posing with your mural. Um, so this one here. <laughs> So you can really see, like, the, as you're watching that, you can see how he that sort of evokes uh, how you're painting and inspires that kind of movement. It's really fun. Um, there we go. Um, so we're gonna see here. Uh, anything you'd like to share as we kind of move along? Yeah, I think you can flip through these pretty quickly, Cindy, and just you know, so this one. Um, so I posted this image. I had done this project in Singapore and I came back and it was a wonderful project that my um, friend Xi and um, Yo had organized um, for their, and, and she teamed up artists from, uh, from different places, um, some from Singapore and some from other countries. And we drew, out, drew names out of a hat and then just did these uh, collaborative projects together in Singapore and my partner, was a wonderful, uh, wonderful artist named Leo, and he didn't, you know, his, his English was mu much better than my Chinese, but he didn't speak that much English, and he would just say, more pink, more pink, and I had never used pink in a painting before, so um, when I came back, I, I made this giant pink painting and posted it on the internet, and um, and the, uh, this uh, woman named uh, Robin um, contacted me and said, you know, I love that painting. I could see it in my house, and um, so that's fantastic. But she lives in; she has this fabulous place in France, and so I, I rolled the painting up, 
uh, we worked out a deal. I rolled the painting up and put it in a tube and in a, in a um, it's a good trick for artists out there. Put it in a ski bag and um, brought it over and stretched it up on Easter Sunday. And that's Robin uh, in her home with the painting. <laughs> so <laughs> great. Go there. This is Adrian Vanderplas hanging a show that I did uh, on the Lower East Side. It's a funny slide. All right. So you've you've exhibited in, in many different places around the world, and we're now we've been looking at a lot of your paintings, and we're now going to kind of see uh, and learn about uh, some of the the exhibitions you've done in different places. Um, and so this here is, is is when you were in Singapore, is that right? It was in Singapore, and then we part of I mean, Shion had lined up all these crazy projects, and one of them they gave us two Volvos. I think they were about sixty sixty thousand each brand new Volvos to paint. And we really made a mess of these cars. <laughs> but it, but it, was, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, and when I was there, you know, one of someone said, you know, we need more of Paul's mark. And I, you know, I never thought I had a mark that I owned a mark, but, uh, you know, I had gotten sort of obsessed with this idea of using these kind of push balls to make a mark because it's a, seemed to be a mark that could morph into a lot of different things. It could be you know, sometimes it looks organic. It looks like something under the sea, under the ocean. Other times it looks like fireworks. So that's the Singapore group in a show that we did there. So this is uh, uh, my son, Sam, and uh, um, his girlfriend, Aya, is a makeup artist um, and a stylist and makeup artist. And so she um, she took the idea of the Koosh marks and, and, and use it as makeup for Sam. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's amazing. We have a question from the audience. Elaine is wondering where you're from originally. Where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in Stoneham, Massachusetts, um, just outside of Boston, Massachusetts, mm. a suburb. Yeah. Um, Stoneham was famous for having the most gas stations in one mile. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think Frank Stella grew up, I think, in the next one of the next towns over, and he said it was a wonderful place to grow up because it's a great place to leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I just wanted to remind, um, just for a second, I just want to remind folks, if you could please mute yourself. I think we can hear someone kind of moving around. So if, if you could just go down and hit the button at the bottom of your screen that mutes you, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so this here, uh, gallery, part of that show. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Miami Basel Art Fair. Just some paintings. That's a photograph was, uh, the other photograph was, it's nice to have friends that are talented. So this photograph was taken by Rene Pierre Alain, who's this really multi-talented person. I mean, he's a, he's a really good uh, artist, painter and photographer. And he just, you know, yeah, there, there aren't many things that he can't do. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, you've at School Street Studio, so that's here in Brooklyn, right? Um, and it's here you in had Brooklyn. an and mm -hmm. Ren Renee and um, and his wife Anita run the studio, and and I did the first. the The concept was that they were going to they wanted to try to kind of marry uh, visual art and music. So um, Renee and, and Anita invited me to to do the first show in the space, and they've done some wonderful things since then. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's so neat because you've had musicians, you've had dancers, you've had family, you've had all kinds of people react in their own ways to your work. And here you have a, a work of art uh, in a restaurant, right? Yeah, that's um, Medwin Pang, who's a really incredibly talented chef and um, and just a great guy. Um, he and his wife, uh, Karen, have become very close friends and um, and they've been real fans. And so they have two, they actually have two paintings in, in the restaurant now. So, and it's... Uh, if you haven't been to Hunger Pang, uh, it's a great place to go. I think it's takeout only now, unfortunately, but it, 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 hopefully they'll be back. And where's it located? Um, it's on Church Avenue in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. not far from where we live, actually. So, and so now Wuhan. So you had the opportunity to go and experience Wuhan yourself, um, which I'm sure there's a lot of folks watching who are curious to hear about that particular experience and how you ended up exhibiting there. Um, 
if you can if you can share a little some stories with us about that so um how i ended up there um really uh, david chen who's really been um really championing uh, not just my work, but many, many artists work in China um, and has started an organization and, and now is working in uh, Hangzhou, um, China. And he just, you know, uh, this, uh, actually that banner is, um, it's, it, that, that particular banner is not in Wuhan, sorry, the slide is a little confusing, the, the, my label is a little confusing, but, um, but my first trip to, my trip to mainland China, this is in Wuhan and, um, it was kind of crazy. I'd never given a talk to uh, 300 um, executives and various people. Um, and, you know, I don't speak a word of Chinese, so I had an interpreter. I had never given a talk with an interpreter. So that was interesting, but somehow people were laughing. I'm not sure if they were laughing at me or what I was saying, but, uh, but, but, uh, but that, it was a good time. And this was your, this was your show here in Wuhan? Yeah, it was part of a show. Yeah, it was it was not was not a solo show, but um, but they did you know have these large paintings, these big frames on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if if anybody has questions, um, oh Jenny just said um, I, a few minutes ago that the Blue Wonder is on her wall here in Northwest England. She said. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Hi, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny has a painting in England, which is really <laughs> nice. So. Here we have the Newhouse Center for Contemporary Art. And this was a show that uh, really spanned 20 years of, of your career um, at Snug Harbor Cultural Center on, on Staten Island um, just last year. Um, and here we're seeing inside that exhibition. Um, and it's I, I think it's beautiful to see many of the works that we've seen in the slideshow um, on, on the wall. You can see how just how large that work is um, that you used the remote control cars for. Yeah, Over it was really interesting for me to see these works that you know I hadn't hadn't really seen some of them for you know twenty years or more. Yeah, I mean, it, for you doing this show, did you did it give you the opportunity to see how your works have evolved or how you've returned to certain concepts or techniques or processes over time? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, it's like that painting um, was one that actually I wasn't planning to put it in the show because it was actually more than 20 years old and I hadn't looked at it for ages. Um, and I pulled it out to show it to my son and he said, that, that's a great painting. You've got to put it in the show. And I said, but it's, I can't. It's more than 20 years old. And then I thought, you know, I can break the rules. <laughs> so I put it in and, and interestingly, um, you know, a lot of people really responded positively to it. And um, so then, you know, sometime after that, I actually um, thought, you know, I'm going to come back to that technique in some way, uh, which of course is just very simply rolling a ball over a canvas. And so, um, but then what I did was I turned the paintings up, started turning the paintings upside down and they, and they look um, instead of looking like a kind of shrub or a bush or, you know, uh, decorative grass or something, they start to look like uh, evoke chandeliers. So I thought that was kind of, kind of cool. I mean, my, yeah. um, you know, very often my works, even though it's not necessarily intentional, but they, they, they look like things to people. So, um, so this is a series of three paintings um, that um, were presented. Uh, if you could go back one slide, please. Uh, uh, back there here yep, to the title. Um, ah, yes. So, yeah. So um, uh, this is my my friend Mc, uh, Michelle and Mikkel, uh, um had done these fabulous preparations to open a restaurant, which will open, and it's actually going to open, I believe, for takeout on the twentieth. Um, and they commissioned three um, three paintings um, for the restaurant, so I'm very excited about that. Um, you can you can move move forward yeah and this here is that okay. kind of uh so you're you're using uh is that are these strings here is that what is that what's happening no, no it's uh, those paintings are just they're made with a ball that just rolls up and then rolls back down oh uh, in this. yeah so um they're so beautiful thank you <laughs> thanks yeah so this is kind of um these are the, the, the sort of the last series that I've been working on.
Uh, so that's interesting. It's, it's sort of bringing things full circle where you initially kind of put a ball on a canvas and just move that around and, and now you're coming back to that in a way. Yeah, exactly. And family. So family, as we've heard throughout this program, has played such a big role in, in your life, obviously, and in inspiring you to take your works uh, of art in different directions. Um, and they've just, it's been a real theme throughout, I'm sure, your life, as well as your work as an artist. Um, yeah, my, my family's been incredibly supportive. And um, I mean, even when I was a kid, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, you know, no one in my family was sort of involved in the arts, but they, but they encouraged me, which is, a, you know, I was really lucky in that way, you know. Um, so, and, you know, my family um, remains, they're, they're, they're a huge part of um, my life and my creative process, actually. It's more, more extended family. But, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, thank you so much. Um, is there anybody who's joining us today that has um, a question or reaction? Um, or maybe there's something that folks are interested in seeing um, in your studio? <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just want to first, uh, I just want to really thank everybody for, for joining. And it's, um, you know, it's a long presentation. So I really, <laughs> I really appreciate everybody, uh, everybody hanging in there. And um, it's, it was really great at the beginning. It was a little bit by default, but it was wonderful to see everybody's face, you know. Um, so um, I'm really missing so many people. Yeah. Well, Paul, we, we appreciate all, all your time um, in, in, and thoughtfulness um, that you put into sharing your story. Um, we have so enjoyed bringing people who are interested in, in painting and in learning more about creative and artistic processes. And, and the fact that you have used so many creative objects as well as engaging the public in, in inspiring your work, uh, I think is, it's, it's, it's an inspiration, inspiration to me. Um, for people who are at home that may want to tinker around themselves uh, with, with um, maybe painting not with a, a paintbrush and, and something else, do you have any, any tips before we sign out? Um, I'd say, you know, at this point, uh, you know, I only want to do things that, that are fun. <laughs> so I would say, you know, have fun and let your kids, uh, if you have them, lead the way and if you don't find some kids that will uh, that will that will lead the way and so um and you know i just want to turn the camera outward for a second because i don't know if you can see these uh these big cranes can you see the cranes yes we can so so that's my you know that's my dream is i i, I want to make a painting with those cranes <laughs> that's going to be my, one of, I, I want that to be one of my next projects so maybe everybody will help with that <clears throat> that would be great. Well, well, thank you so much, Paul. We hope you have a, a, a good day. Um, thanks so much to everyone for joining us. Um, later on this afternoon at four o'clock, we're doing a program with Heroes and Villains, uh, a vendor in the Essex market um, about <laughs> they make. Um, tomorrow we're doing the history of carousels in Brooklyn. Um, and, uh, and we just have so many exciting programs coming up. So we hope that you'll join us. Um, and we can see Paul's studio here. Um, so Paul, thanks so much. Have a great day. And um, we hope to see you in person sometime soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, everybody for joining. Really appreciate it.